Appreciate you, Brother George and John and all of those who just kind of took the lead uh, while we were gone. I, like I said, I don't, I don't like being gone that long, uh, but I guarantee you it was not vacation. It was not. Uh, it was work. And um, so, but the work always pays off. Um, Paul tells us. Uh, that your labor in the Lord is always worthy of it. I just paraphrased that and destroyed the verse. But anyway, um, doing things for the Lord has its own reward. You don't need <clears throat> titles. You don't need money. Uh, you don't need fame and fortune. And you don't need rec you don't need recognition. And that's that's key. When you work for the Lord, you don't do it for recognition. You, know, you don't do it to climb the ladder. You do it because you do it out of love. You do it for the same reason God does it. And he does it out of love for us. And uh, Christ came on this earth. And if you notice in the Gospels, every time one of his disciples wanted to exalt him or every time somebody, people wanted to lift him up, Jesus said, no, mm-mm. -mm. No, and it's because he knew that the work was not to be finished until the cross. And he had plenty of Jews that would have made him king while he was on the earth the first time uh, because they wanted out from underneath Roman rule. They wanted to be their own kingdom again, uh, but they were not worthy of it at the time. Uh, and so Christ came and offered them salvation. They refused it. And so he now is our king. Somebody say amen. 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 Uh, and let's go to Revelation 10 uh, very quickly. And we'll sort of put our minds and our hearts back where it was um, before the month of January. By the way, I'll, and I'll announce this uh, during the service too, uh, we have absolutely nothing to send out as far as the month of January is concerned. For those of you who are on our mailing list and you get DVDs and things from us uh, uh, every month, there's nothing for January. My camera that I took got busted on the way out to Kenya. And it's the first camera that we ever, that we ever had, um, professional camera, uh, and it was bought for us by a man and his wife that followed our ministry uh, years ago. Uh, and he, he was somebody that, well, he was vice president of a company, big company across the country. And uh, they had money, and he offered to buy things to get us started. And that camera was one of the things that he bought for us. And, um, and I mean, it, it, nothing on it worked. Nothing worked. And uh, so I was pretty disappointed about that. So we have nothing to put out in the month of January. So... Uh, the whatever whatever preaching was done here while we were gone, we're just going to stick that on to February and send it out um, at the beginning of March. All right, all right. Revelation chapter ten. Um, John says, verse one: I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of Fire. So far, we are having descriptions of, I believe, Jesus Christ. The fact that he is the mighty angel, he is clothed with a cloud, that signifies Christ. The rainbow upon his head, that is the glory of the Lord, which God said he wouldn't share with another, uh, according to Ezekiel 1 and other places. Um, face being as the sun tells us that uh, Revelation, excuse me, uh, Psalm chapter 19, the heavens are a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom. Well, that signifies Christ. And then in Malachi chapter 4, uh, to you, may the sun of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And they capitalize the word sun, S-U-N. Uh, he is the sun of righteousness. In Matthew 17, when Jesus is transfigured, his face is shining as the sun. So to me, it signifies Christ. His feet as pillars of fire. As Moses 
led the Israelites through the wilderness with one pillar of fire by night, so I believe this mighty angel, which I believe to be Christ, is set to lead his people through the, uh, to the promised land with two pillars of fire, not one. That signifies the Old and the New Testament together. I got some things, uh, more things to say about that uh, this morning during the message. I, uh, I went and doubled back on the, the series that we're doing uh, where I'm kind of relating the journey of the children of Israel from Egypt into the Promised Land as like our journey getting from here to heaven or our journey here in this world for things that would be better if we lived a certain way or we lived in a certain place or goals that we may have set as far as spiritual goals. Like if you say, you know, I just have a hard time reading the Bible. And so I just find that I don't, I don't read the Bible. I'd like to, but I just fail to. You call upon the Lord, God will help you. And I guarantee you, there is an illustration in, in some place in that story of Moses guiding his people to the promised land. The promised land for you in that illustration is you fell in love with the Bible. You're reading it not out of, not out of commandment. You're reading it because you want it. And you just can't get enough of it. And I've been on both sides of that. I used to get up early in the morning when Lisa would uh, go to work and uh, get my Bible out at quarter till six in the morning and try to read the Old Testament, try to read the prophets. And I'm just going, I don't get it. Of course, it's early and I'm not an early riser. I'm not somebody whose brain starts working before at least nine o'clock. And uh, so I just, I'm just like, I don't understand this. But then one day God opened up the doors of my heart and uh, turned the light on. And I found a time in my life where I couldn't read it enough. And it was constantly in my mind, in my heart. I was reading it, studying it, meditating on it. And, um, and that made a big difference in my life, made a big difference in everything that relates to me. So that was the promised land for me. And uh, I am thankful God has brought me there. I have other promised lands that I need to go to. I'm talking about the, here I am talking about the sermon this morning. Um, but anyway, I found myself doubling back on something that I've already covered. Um, and it, it came, it was based upon something that was said by one of the pastors there. I think it was in Turkana. And uh, what a blessing it was. All right, now. It says here in verse 2 of Revelation 10, uh, he had in his hand a little book open. Now, if we remember from Revelation 5, that God is holding a book in his right hand. It's sealed with seven seals. Uh, the number seven uh, denotes perfection, completion. And in this case also, it would, because of the seals, it uh, shows the the sealing or the blessing and the preservation by God's Holy Spirit. Don't doubt it. God really has preserved his word. Over the thousands of years from the first time Moses sat down to write down the, the books of the law, the story of Genesis, uh, the story of Abraham, all of the Levitical law, even the end of Deuteronomy where Moses is buried. Either Moses wrote about it or somebody came along after him and wrote about it. But all of that has been preserved for us intact for all, for all of this time. Uh, the Bible compares its words to honey. And what is the one thing about honey that makes honey unique? from any other thing in the world that 
Huh? It's pure. Never goes bad ever. Honey, because I think it's the, the acid content in it, uh, it never, ever, ever goes bad. They, they have, and I was just watching something the other day about this, they have samples of honey that they know goes back thousands of years and still good. It is. There's nothing wrong with it. And you know, if you've got honey crystallized, you know, in a jar in your pantry somewhere, all you got to do is what? Heat it up. And once you heat it up, be careful, put it in the microwave. But once you heat it up, it's, it's just as good as if the bees squirted it out right there or puked it out. Okay, because it's bee vomit, it's what it is. Yeah, and it's still good. Not a thing wrong with it. So that, to me, thy words are sweeter than honey. And uh, the, the uh, boy, I'm preaching. I'm, my mind is just running all over the place. Um, yeah, it's preserved, all right? <laughs> okay, it's preserved. He had his hand a little book open. And that's uh, where we were going with, with this idea of the book being open and what it signifies. Psalm 139, 16, if you want to turn your Bibles there. Mark this in your Bible. Turn, look at it. Underline it. Write the word DNA, which is not a word. It's an acronym. It means deoxyribonucleic acid. Write that down if you want which means that it's not ribonucleic acid. It's deoxyribonucleic acid. And uh, RNA is single strand, DNA is two strand. But anyway, uh, this I believe is absolutely relevant for the times that we're living in. Somebody sent me a, a text message, I don't remember who it was. Um, where Elon Musk um, has started, I guess, the early trials of a Neuralink thing that is attached to the human brain and links you with the world, the World Wide Web. Imagine getting a phone call in your head. Imagine answering it like this. Hello? Yeah, speak louder. You wouldn't have to, you know, hang it up. You wouldn't have to do that. It would go right into your brain. Okay? Now, believe it or not, I see a lot of people going, uh-uh, uh-uh, I ain't doing that. Believe it or not, I think it I think it will offer people an experience that once they have it, they'll never not want to have it. It's like people, it's like people who get hooked on drugs. Because once they get a taste of it, and, and drug dealers know this, all you got to do is hang out at schools. That's all you got to do. All you got to do is have, have one kid in a school who is going to be your inside dealer and you give him a big baggie full of heroin or meth and just say, give this out to people. Get, make it free. Because he knows that once they have that first time, they'll never not want it. They'll come back for more. And they'll, they will pay whatever. And they will steal from whoever just to get that. Okay? That's what it does to people. And um, so I, I think that Elon Musk or whoever is really behind this is going to offer people an experience that once they have it, they will never, ever, ever want to be without it. But I, but I think it's a choice that people are going to make. They're going to choose consciously to do this. All right, anyway. Um, so he had in his hand a little book open, 
And in Psalm 139, 16, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book. So what book is he talking about? All my members were written. Uh, all the members of your body, your eyes, your hands, your pretty armpits. Yeah, your pretty toes. Um, every part of your body that is seen and not seen are all members of the same body, and they all contain a sample of, these, of all the same DNA. Every part of your body has, has the same DNA as others. It's just that in some parts of the body, it's expressed differently than it is in other parts of the body. Uh, here's another way of looking at it. In thy book, DNA. I want you to notice that DNA is rolled up. Okay, and this, this has to do with what we're talking about. In order to read the book of DNA, it has to be opened. Oh, there's a, there's a sermon right there. I, I just preached it and I'm done. In order, to, in order to know what the Bible says, you got to read it. In order to read it, you got to what? Open it. Let's stand and be dismissed. Okay? Get on out of here. No, you've got to open the book. The book ha but in this case... John said, I wept because no one was found worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And the seals represent the seven seals of the Spirit or the seven spirits of God. Um, and so that book must be opened by someone. And in this case, it must be opened by Christ. He's the only one that can open it. So in thy book, all my members were written, which in continuance was fashioned. Okay? And, and ask the question... When as yet there was none of them, which, which of these is it okay to murder and which of these is not? Okay, let me get my little pen out here. Felt tip. There we go. Is it okay to, to murder these bodies? Because these are the same as this because of the DNA. And if it's not okay to kill these, then it's not okay to kill these, and it's not okay to kill these. And the other argument is, well, it's just a glob of tissues. Well, just a glob of tissues doesn't turn into a human being, does it? It doesn't. Well, it's a woman's body, so it's a woman's choice. Not, no, it's not. The DNA of the child that a woman carries is not the same DNA as the woman who's carrying it. It's not the same. Okay? While, while it may be okay for you to go through your home library and pull out books that you used to read that are just pure garbage and smut and everything else, while it may be okay to get rid of those books, it's not okay to get rid of your Bible. Make sense? Okay? That's the book of life. And so God gave to each one of us the book of life. And he said, if you take any of the words out, I'll take your name out of the book of life. If you add words to it, I'll add the plagues that are written in it. All right, moving right along. Let me get to, we kind of know how it works a little bit. Uh, there it is right there. Uh, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. Okay? That's because it's the word of God, and it's preserved forever. It is not capable of being corrupted, just like honey is not able to be corrupted. The Bible isn't. Yes? Uh, I've got a, a uh, nephew of mine that has a honey system. Yeah. And I, I feel like I need to bring this in. He, he, he's got certain places that if he takes it to those, like, like the almond trees in, in California, Yeah. that that almond honey that the bees make, they can't use it. Really? Because it's too bitter. Huh. That's, that's a good story. 
Yeah, that's a good, that's a good theological ID. So they, I get what you're saying. Now for those of you who couldn't hear him online, he said there, if they put the beehives, uh, he's, got a, he's got somebody that is a professional honey farmer, and um, if they put the beehive too near certain vegetation, certain trees or whatever, I can see that with, with almonds. The honey comes out bitter. Uh, almonds kind of have a little bit of a bitter taste in it. Um, so that makes sense. Um, and they tell you, uh, I don't know how true it is, but they tell you that if you have allergies, then you should eat honey from the area that you live in. Am I saying that right? Okay, because that helps your, uh, your allergies. And you're eating basically the pollen or the results of the pollen that the bees picked up in your area and that which they converted into honey. So anyway, all right, let's move along. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's because the legs of DNA are made of phosphorus, which is light. And they're also made of sugar, which is where the, the idea of the honey comes from. Uh, now, let's see here. I already did that. In thy book, all my memories were written. I already did that. I already did that. Now, we're going to deal with the issue of how DNA is read and how um, DNA causes something to appear in your body. Um, if I, Chris and I we had the same, we had two different rooms in this apartment, but we had both had the exact same problem. He walked around his bed and raked his shin across the corner of that bed, and he went, ow! And I said, what happened? He said, I hit the corner of the bed. And I rolled my leg up. I had a scar that long from the corner of my bed. And it just bled like crazy. Uh, I don't know why I was talking about that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's one of those Sundays. But anyway, um, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, okay, that didn't help me at all. Yeah. We had the same problem. Maybe that helps me anyway. Anyway, it's the, the, we're going we're gonna to find out how the book is open. Okay, I know what I was saying. I got this scar on my leg. Well, all of that tissue has to be replaced. The blood has to be replaced. The, um, the skin cells all have to be replaced. They have to be made first. I don't carry around a, a depository of skin cells you know, in a, in a skin bag somewhere on my body. I don't have that. So they have to be made on site. As, as soon as they're needed, they have to be made. And so the DNA kicks into gear. And it finds the place in your DNA code where the recipe is to make skin, to make blood cells, to make platelets, or whatever it is needed your body finds that place in the DNA, it makes a copy of it. I'll get to that. I saw in the book of the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. DNA, when it's rolled up, is sealed by what are called hydrogen bonds. Hyd think of water, and when you spill water on the table, does it automatically just flush off the table? No. Because water has a little bit of a, of a sticky, I don't know what you call it, viscosity. Which means that if you spill water on the table, it will bead up in, a, in places and it will stop. And that's the water cells that are holding themselves together on your tabletop. And you'll have to wipe it off or let it wait till it evaporates. But that's one of the things neat about hydrogen and water. When we think of hydrogen, we think of water, is that it holds things together. Okay, uh, when you put a stamp on an envelope, you lick it first, stick it on there. Okay, the water gets with the glue. But anyway, that's how DNA is held together by these little seals on there called hydrogen bonds. A seal shows authority. 
This is what is sealed. Now, you know what? I've, te I've taught this recently. I'm going to move on. Um, in the case of DNA, the seals of DNA, the reason why it's rolled up and sealed is to preserve its contents, to make sure that nothing alters the genetic code that's in your DNA. So you read a bunch of stuff on the internet about this thing changing your DNA, or you read about GMO food changing your DNA. Let me just tell you, altering your DNA happens to you about 10,000 times a day every single day you, you are alive. Your cells, when they divide, they don't always divide right. They don't always, the DNA doesn't always get copied correctly. So you have bad cells. And what happens is your body has a way of killing off that cell. I mean, that's why you have an immune system. You have an immune system because that's what the immunities do. That's what the white blood cells do. They kill things that don't belong there. And so any cell where the DNA is copied incorrectly, that cell is destroyed and sent out of the body so it does no harm whatsoever. So when you say, well, I'm not eating that, that changes my DNA. So far, we have not seen any evidence at all that there are people walking around that are not human beings that have had their genetics altered to such a state is that they're no longer human. We don't have any evidence of that. So when be careful what you read and believe from the internet, um, especially about DNA or about science. Trust the Word of God. Um, some of this is a little hard for me to explain sometimes. The Bible makes it easier, as far as I'm concerned. Let God open the book and close the book. Let God uh, show you what to believe. Read the Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. Think Bible. That's the message I take everywhere I go is think Bible. Okay? And uh, also remember what Jesus said about His protection over us. You don't have to worry that something you accidentally do or partake of in this world is going to change your DNA and you're going to lose your salvation. It doesn't work that way. God knows how to protect his people. Amen? Did he not save Lot from Sodom and Gomorrah? Did he not save Noah and his family? Did he not preserve them? And what was the ark all about in Noah's day? It was to preserve seed, which preserved DNA. Literally is what it meant. All right, uh, so anyway, the DNA is sealed to preserve its contents. It's sealed to show its authority. It has authority over the dominion over the body. Sealed until a specific time, such as DNA expression. I'll explain that next Sunday. Uh, when a protein, such as insulin, is needed in the body or when the cell is ready to duplicate itself. So what we'll get into next Sunday uh, is this idea of opening the book, okay, and who's worthy and who's not, all right? Let's bow for prayer. Thank God for the bell. Heavenly Father, I pray, dear God, that you would open our eyes to wondrous things that we behold out of your word. We thank you, God, that you have preserved this word. We thank you, God, that every word uh, remains intact from the very day that you sent it down to this earth to this very day. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us of your Holy Spirit that lightens our hearts, that shines in our, in our dark path and shows us the way to go. And Father, bless your word and bless this service. Bless the preaching of your word this morning. Open up my heart, my eyes, and these people, Lord, that have come to this place, open up their hearts, their minds, their eyes, Lord, to behold wondrous things out of your word Help us to see, Lord, what there is to see. We pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, amen. amen. By the way, you know what the Swahili word for amen is? Amen. amen.